Let's see. Okay. All right. Okay, so we can start. Uh, first of all, thank you and welcome Dave. Dave is your name or David? Devin. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's a name I don't know. <laughs> I have to think of maybe about Kevin and then uh, I have to think about it anyway. And we'll come back Kate today with a face, that's nice. And everybody else. And I guess somebody else will still come. I hope Damiano will come because we want to talk about this platform, which seems to be really good to be able to, after this, um, the, the conversations, to, to post whatever you want to post there, considerations, insights, whatever, and also other things. So uh, he gave me a little bit of an uh, introduction, which I have posted, I think. Uh, where did I post that? Or did I send it to you? I think I sent it to you with an email. And I think it's really a good thing. So before we really start, um, oh, the other Karen, that's good. Welcome, Karen. Uh, who would like to do the timestamps today? Last time I did it, so Natalie is here too. Timestamps means all right while we are uh, uh, talking about what topics we are talking and more or less where it is in the video or re-listen to it afterwards and write down what we talk about where in the video. <clears throat> I would like to do that today. I can't because it's just on my iPhone. I have to hold it. Yeah, yeah, that you can. Uh, you do it, Kate. That's good. So, okay. So, uh, seeing that Damiano is not yet here, we just dive into what we planned to do. Last time we did beige. Uh, oh, I should say today it's uh, Sunday the 17th. 17th of March, thank you, 2019. So we get it in the, into the sequence. And last time we talked about beige and many of us were completely surprised how much we could talk about beige and we could even have talked longer while, uh, like you, Karen, um, Karen Reiter, <laughs> I would say, or oh, what is it? If Karen Florida, are you? Oh, no, Flor Florida is you. Oh, I, I, I never know which one. Karen Forhays, let's, uh, let's say with the full name. California. Karen. California. California. California, Karen. Okay, California, Karen. Versus Texas, Karen. Okay. Uh, it takes some time for me to, also because I'm not so familiar with American states, so I have to, you know. Um, you said at the beginning that uh, you didn't think to be able to talk about beige such a long time, and you sort of tried to ins insert it already in the whole integral worldview, and then I said, stop, let's first talk about beige, and then it came out that it was so much to, to talk about, and uh, today we want to do the same thing uh, with uh, purple and not yet really putting it in the whole thing. I think that comes afterwards that we do the consideration of how the, the different stages fit, fit in or how we, you know, whatever we want to say, but try to find out what is purple, uh, maybe in our lives, what did we observe uh, in other people or what, what comes to our mind when, when we think about the stage of development of, of, of purple and very welcome experiences which you had with people because one of the reasons why we do that is also to, to learn a little bit better how to handle people who have their center of gravity in the different levels as we are so high up the ladder, we don't know anymore how to talk to these people. What, for instance, when, when you remember, what is the typical phrases they say or the typical um, uh, behaviors and things like that. Whatever comes up in the line with purple is welcome. Okay, so let's start. Whoever wants first. Um, I I had another experience similar to beige. Uh, just looking on, I find the 
the spiral dynamics website just like so useful i was kind of going through these like various categories and um just having like these kind of major hits of um of purple i sort of realized like how kind of um sweet and emotional and like connected it is at its best um i saw I'll, I'll probably go into this later but i kind of did like a rundown of like how i little, little ways i see purple kind of interacting with um all the levels up and um there was one thing i wanted to do but i couldn't really get enough i was looking on pinterest to have like these kind of pictures and quotes because i saw one on the spire dynamics website and it was like really evocative but unfortunately i found a load of kind of slightly a lot of saccharine green kind of stuff um which is kind of fine but uh <laughs> it's a bit much of it but like I, I was personally thinking of like the native indians um just kind of this ma massive connection to that and like not just the the family bonds and this kind of one of my favorite words in spine dynamics was uh automatic and organic like it doesn't even you don't even have to um think about the the connections with people they just occur without even like having to to vocalize it and also i think for me personally one of the most beautiful things about uh, especially like pure purple is that the whole natural ecosystem is like a, um, a sort of greater extended family but like this great kind of spiritual connection like um again the native Indians is kind of like um like befriending wolves and bears and things like this being like really tightly woven into their culture and kind of uh literally putting on heads and things of these animals so um uh yeah yeah that's enough for me thank you uh paul i want to welcome damiano i see you are in the car or somewhere so uh, we have started with uh the topic and maybe if it's possible then towards the end we will talk about your website uh, or this uh, platform if it is possible so and now we continue let's say with a check-in and uh, regarding purple yes um the can you all hear me the oneness the the connection the oneness and uh, a comment on native americans and other other purple peoples around the world is that they'll typically call like the bear people or the crow people or the rabbit people they're all peoples there are different peoples but they're peoples and there is an energy connection when you're really in that stage it's a a, a, a psychic oneness it's a fusedness at the early developmental stages it's you're not yet separate and when i get into purple is sometimes when i'm writing um I, I spend six months of the year up in a, a redwood forest on the Pacific coast. And it's in really in a deep, very natural environment. And this last summer when I was having some issues about where I could be alone to do my writing and the one cabin I was using, the neighbors basically decided to put on the rental program so I couldn't use it. And oh my gosh, where am I going to do my writing? And the crows, I have a, a deep personal, very Jungian association with crows from dreams and and, and uh, Grateful Dead songs and a personal association. During the five days where I was transitioning out, out of one cabin and what am I gonna do? And then another cabin became available in a very beautiful way with lots of synchronicities. And the crows who live in the Redwood Gully next to our cabin were in my face that entire week. Like mm. when something significant would happen, one of them or two of them would land on the railing of my deck and like, like caught in my face, oh, 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 oh. and flying past me when I was walking out to the car, like whooshing past over one shoulder and landing right in front of the cabin. I was negotiating to write in and then pecking and then flying up in the tree behind it. I mean, they, they were like in my face in a way I've never seen before or since. And every now and then, it's easy to get things, and this is a purple too, it's easy to get really superstitious. And this is the that three-year-old thing, step on the crack, break your mother's back, we're really superstitious. It's it's animistic, you know, we're, and it's there's a fusion. And when I'm living in the forest during the summer months, that comes up and that's when I do go into the deep places where I can do my, my most creative writing. And then in the winter months when I'm living in the city in Berkeley and it's very urban and I'm in my communities and 
and, and more of an outer life, I don't have that so much. But that was my in-my-face experience last summer. Thank you, and welcome, Daniel. So we go through the round, okay? Well, um, I'll I'll say a, a few things as I'm waking up here and uh, trying to think. Um, talk about purple. I'm ready to go back into the dream world. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting subject to me because where I grew up in Hawaii, there's a lot of purple. And Hawaii, I think, is kind of a unique place in, in the United States because the, the purple uh, native indigenous Hawaiian culture is still very much alive and present in the overall uh, center of gravity, you know, in the conversation of the general population. And, um, so where, where I was growing up at a Buddhist temple, there were a lot of old Japanese coffee farmers who are like right out of the purple dictionary. I mean, great people, wonderful people. And if you ask them about, and they, they didn't, they, a lot of them didn't really speak a lot of English. So they spoke like a lot of like broken English, like pidgin English in, in Hawaiian. And if you'd ask them about something like, why did this happen? Or, you know, why did an accident happen? Or, um, you know, why are they having a certain health problem? Oh, it's because of the ghost. Oh, it's because of the spirits. It's because of my ancestors, you know. My, uh, my parents' spirits are watching over me. And sometimes it would actually be a problem, and my mom as a minister would have to say, well, well, okay, but you still have to go to the doctor because you have a physical problem too. And so she'd have to try to communicate with them in a way in which they would actually be on board with going to get physical help because for them it was not a physical cause of the problem. And um, there was another incident in Hawaii where the volcano erupted several times at, um, in the last uh, five or six years, there were a few big eruptions that destroyed a lot of houses. And both times when the volcano erupted, a lot of the people's uh, houses who were destroyed, they weren't even that upset. They, you know, they were just like, oh, this is a goddess Pele. She's just doing her thing. She's just, this is just the way of life in Hawaii and we're just visitors in Pele's home. And that attitude of like acceptance and the attitude of like, um, because, because I see that this is the spirit, you know, it's kind of meant to be. It, it, this is not just a random accident in which I'm, it, 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 like, it's very different than the orange worldview where you just see things as objects and, and scientifically, right? So it's like this, this very much alive and very much heartfelt connection to the land and to the volcano. Uh, so it's, it's something very sweet to see, even though these people have lost, you know, all kind of their property and home and everything is very tragic, but they still have an attitude of acceptance and, and surrender to the what happened. So that's when my experience with uh, purple in Hawaii. That's really beautiful, and I think it's really the, the um, a good description of, of what it is. I'm as a facilitator or let's say host. I would ask Daniel to um, mute yourself. I tried to mute you. Uh, there comes a lot of noise from your part. I couldn't do it for my part. So or don't use your cell phone too much so that it is uh, giving too much noise or find out how to mute yourself. And everybody, when we don't speak, um, or be very quiet or uh, mute yourself, okay? Good. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll speak after Ryan here. Uh, Ryan and I met through an association in Hawaii, and so I've run uh, I've run leadership and sustainability programs on Big Island for a couple of years, so I can really, really appreciate much of what, uh, what Ryan is bringing forth. Uh, before that, I lived in Yukon, Alaska, and, and in indigenous communities and practiced shamanism for a couple of years as well. And so the, the purple worldviews are really, are really alive and present. And, and one word that I'll, that I'll add that hasn't been brought forth but has kind of been hinted to is the word of reverence. And so there's a reverence that goes with this serene acceptance. And in this non-differentiation between oneself and others and different environments, including natural environments, there is, as Ryan pointed out, this you know, natural sort of, of reverence and acceptance that what she as Pelly will do is just to be accepted within, within us. What different animals will do is to be accepted and so there is this 
um, non-differentiation and the extension of the self and, and also referring to two different environments in the lang in the in the language of he or she. I came back from Hawaii about a week ago and we had been working with uh, native native Hawaiian cultural practitioners who are still embracing the ancient uh, tradition of voyaging canoes. And so what this means is they'll go out onto the ocean and find their way across to different islands, go as far as Tahiti without any sort of modern, <clears throat> modern guidance. And so these canoes, as an example, are referred to as she. And the guidance of, of the stars, the father sky, so there's a he-she reference. Uh, just a couple of examples. Well, I'll go next. Hello, everyone from Texas. Um, I I like going into purple. After work, I my dog, my border collie, and I will go here in our neighborhood. We have a four and a half mile walking trail that goes along a creek and around a pond. And um, um, I almost feel like I enter a mist, as they say in the literature, or are go through a veil and it's uh, i've done a lot of um journeying and vision quests and i i hadn't really thought of it as being purple but listening to you guys speak it's you know becoming one with the trees and and with nature and there are people around me but i'm so much more tuned into as karen said the birds and and karen crows have really been in my life a lot in the last week i guess it's a seasonal thing here but big crows big crows but I just love that, and it's it's so healing. And in my head, you know, I'm I'm thinking nature heals, and and um, you know, I almost wish that I could walk into. There's some some pretty heavily um, forested areas, if you can call that in Texas. But I almost wish sometimes I could just walk into the those areas and just go through the veil, and you know, not not end my life, but just become, you know, like almost lie down and become one with the earth, and. Um, it's, we also have, a, as I said, a pond, and there's a dock that goes out on it that's very low. And my dog, Maya, and I will go out on the dock, and, and I'll just lie down flat on my back. And, you know, in my mind, it's like I know this water. I know these clouds. I know these trees. I know, this, you know, um, the birds. And just become one with that. I'm... I'm I'm getting that, and, and for me, it's like a home. It's like a home sweet home, which the Spiral Dynamics uh, website uses as one of the mantras for um, purple. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I can relate to what you just shared. Um, it's like my uh, morning walks with my dog out in the wooded area. I'm in um, northern New Hampshire, the White Mountain Range, and it's just beautiful. And um, it is uh, um, that, that kind of quality. And the other thing I find that as when I come up against um, the not knowing, it seems like that that's where I kind of go with that experience of just being interconnected, you know, and it's okay if I can't reason it out or rational it out or whatever. And um, um, I think that that quality um, to uh, not, in, you know, to, to embrace that, in spite of the rational and the um, all-knowing kind of culture we live in, um, it to me it's really, really it really enhances um, um, uh, what it means to be fully alive and, and fully expanded in, in a sense of consciousness. Is there any way, by the way, that I can? Is there a switch or anything that I can see everyone? Because this morning. Um, it's the first time where I can only see one person at a time. Is there any switch that brings up the uh, mosaic screen? You can swipe left or right and then see up to maybe four people at a time, but not necessarily everyone. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank you. And I wanted to say to Daniel, who came in with the telephone, I have muted you again. Uh, so I hope you find uh, how to unmute yourself when you want to speak. And when you want to speak, you just come in. We leave 
um, far un between one person and another, we leave a little bit of an interval, so you can jump in, okay? I'd like to say something. I think it's, um, I can resonate with everything everybody's saying, and it's kind of beautiful and lovely, and also, on the other hand, um, <laughs> You know, Ken often t writes about the green memes proclivity for really over identifying with purple and being really comfortable with the integration of what they're calling purple and missing the whole story, which there was some shadow stuff in purple that we maybe don't haven't integrated quite so well you know, the kind of tribal othering, you know, like we're all okay inside the circle and everybody outside the circle is not okay and is the enemy. And I think that, you know, has definitely continued. And a lot of the fear-based things in purple, you know, that have showed up in being, I mean, I remember Don Beck said that um, Dick Cheney was an excellent uh, was a really master of manipulating people's purple fears and, you know, ramping them up in people so that he could, you know, achieve whatever he wanted to. So there is this, a lot of shadow stuff in purple that we haven't, maybe haven't integrated. Yeah, um, and, oh, yeah, okay. Who is that, Natalie, you? Yeah, go for it, Heidi. Go ahead. Okay, so I go. Um, yeah, and in purple is also the sacrifice thing, you know, the ritual sacrifices and uh, children or whoever uh, get sacrificed for better rain or whatever it is. We forget that, no, when we take out only the, the good parts of, of purple. That was, I don't think it's still now, I don't know, uh, Ryan, I don't think Hawaiian are still doing human sacrifices when they are in purple. But, uh, I am living in Italy for 30 years and with the help of spiral dynamics and I'm not living like Damiano in the north but in the middle and you know it's already considered almost south. Um, there are many people who I consider are still in purple and now I see emerge the, the red energy of people and that it makes itself seen by people who come, for instance, to help me, to workers, you know, the one who is working my field and, and so on. He is, in my opinion, still in purple. He is trustworthy. He is um, being, you know, wants to do his best for me, is, feels connected with me and whoever he's working with, you know, and, and uh, wants to do its best because it's part of the, of his, bigger family, let's say. And then there are the others who try to get money out of you, you know, while he is not. And uh, I find it's very, not only here, there, there are many other people I could name. Um, it's interesting to see how that changes within a generation or so. When I came here, almost everybody was in that, what I today would call purple. I mean the countryside, I'm not in a city, you know, in the countryside is always backward. So, and now the, the red comes quite through. And then at the same time, the state tries to implement blue. Yeah, it's an interest, interesting mix. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of my experience with my, my mother's in purple and red. And um, there's a lot of volatility that comes along with that present moment absorption, a lot of like, uh, not, 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 not very much continuity, uh, between moment to moment in life too. And so, um, I feel like that's what sets up for, for red coming into play is the recognition of, um, trusting in whatever and accepting in whatever is happening now. Um, there's, there's a lot of hardship in that too. And when um, we can start to get in touch with that and actually feel some of those feelings of the hardship for the first time that supports that transition into red, but also that spon spontaneousness um, as red comes along, that can be a really dangerous um, combination of red and purple.
Yes, thanks. That's exactly the transition I'm working on in my novel that's set 11,000 years ago. So I've been wrestling with these issues for the last three years. And thank you, Kate, for bringing up the other side because purple is beautiful and wonderful and that's we are viscerally connected to life. It's magic in the best senses, but it's also magic in the worst senses. It is a terrifying place to be. This is the realm of our worst nightmares. This is the realm of Stephen King's dark fantasies. And at that level, we have no defenses against it. We are just open to the moment. It's very much in the moment, like Natalie was just saying. So, uh, and this is, this is taking it abstract, but just briefly, but as I see us coming back around and reintegrating purple, now that we're putatively in second tier, and we have conscious access to all of these levels where we begin to, as we reconnect with the purple and we get that sense of aliveness and how alive I feel when the crows are doing synchronistic things in a very magical, beautiful, magical way out there in the redwood forest. But the savageries that are possible at that level, you read about some of the things the Apaches did, you read about some of the things tribal peoples can do and you just go, oh my God, I wish I hadn't read that. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to have nightmares about this. We are, as we come back around and reintegrate, we can reintegrate and be open to the dark side, but we have the tools from the higher levels to deal with the dark sides of these now. So as this pulse of life, the, the re re-emerging with that beautiful life all over the spiritual life of nature around us we're no longer um vol we're no longer at the mercy of the dark side we just stop there yeah i mean i also live in the country and in a wood in the woods and the nature nature is very beautiful but boy there's a lot that goes on at night that's <laughs> coyotes and the fox there's somebody getting massacred almost every night like you said it's stuff of kind of nightmares it's not all just like i wouldn't go out there walking around in the middle of the night <laughs> sometimes yeah and adding to that um good green people think nature is you know like they see on the pictures and i had to learn my lesson here you know with all the cruelties of which nature does you 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 have this picture of how everything is nice and the first time the, the dog eats the hen or the fox comes or whatever happens it happens everything you can Im maybe you can't even imagine and then you get a completely different picture about nature nature can be beautiful but mainly it's a force which you have not really a means to contain it I mean or really to influence it and it does what it wants and you know with all the hurricanes and what is coming on we, we see it we still try to dominate it somehow but who knows I don't think we will win well, I think <clears throat> to, excuse me if you're aware the um, the right wing forces that um, going throughout the whole world um, that they, they that they they are not rational uh, that they are driven by um, believing that the magic of the word or the magic of this or, or kill a few people or whatever you know that 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 you, for me I don't think we're going to get at them through reasoning and debate and dialogue I think that um, like the response to New Zealand, where they're starting to talk about containment of these forces uh, um, is kind of like something I've been trying to say for quite a while that uh, I just, <clears throat> I think we talk about na nature evil forces. We've got a lot of evil forces, I think, that are manifesting today. And I think understanding that they do believe that if someone says they're going to do something, they can do something, they will do it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, when you talk to people that follow Trump, uh, for example, here in the United States, um, <clears throat> they really believe in his ability to do whatever he says he's going to do, you know? And um, so I think it's good to be aware that that, <clears throat> that stage in development, when people are arrested in that stage and they become very aggressive politically, all that, that you're not going to be able to have talk shows and debate shows uh, to contain that. And my issue is 
is is that we contain it and not destroy the great progress we've already made. I want to add here, we often, even if we are in integral, we have these magic beliefs that things, uh, every day, you know, that things go away when you don't look at them or something like that, you know, and they are much more <coughs> pervasive in our everyday life than we really would like to, to see them. And you can see it with other people when they, as they, as you say, you know, that they have this magic belief in that will everything be all right. Or even, you know, only do your affirmations half an hour every day and then uh, yeah. everything will be fine. That's a magic belief. With that oh element of um, if someone says they're going to do something, they will, will do it or that uh, grandiose sense of capability. Uh, there's also the sense of um, anything that I don't know doesn't exist. Kind of like the child playing peekaboo. Once it's gone, it's gone. And if it's not there, it can't possibly be a thing. And um, so that like not being aware of what they don't know can be a really dangerous factor. Daniel, you has, Daniel has unmuted himself. Shall we give him a Oh, no, he's gone. Okay, Paul, go ahead. That, that was what I was going to ask about, actually. I was like, oh, we're talking about purple and we haven't heard from Daniel. Um, yeah, I was just going to say on the, the back of Natalie, and this is partly a bit personal because I'm really starting to get pissed off at some green uh, community. Like... I've been noticing like really wanting this unconscious connection uh, with purple, but then finding it a bit crazy making that um, for some reason there's a, there is a very strong alliance between green and purple. Like um, green has this aversion to blue religion, but for some reason the kind of all these kind of pagan tribal stuff is just fantastic. It sort of fits with this, I guess, kind of hedonism and sensuality. It's a lot more embodied and um, all this kind of stuff. And also I see with green, like, uh the, the green kind of does this thing of i guess imaginary thinking like uh the ability to just kind of um quite a few people mention this this thing of like things are just the way they're meant to be or there's a kind of like disassociation from stuff and one of the reasons i've been getting so pissed off lately is like that that works with uh trauma and possibly like abusive dodgy um boundaries and there's a there's a strange way that the emphasis on kind of inner child and emotions just really blends with um really blends with purple but without probably the sort of brutal tribal um uh rules or something and, and also the commitment to it and reverence to it at times Well, I know in my work with uh, people that they are um, thinking uh, when people blame themselves for how their parents were mistreating them and um, uh, how they put themselves down. You know what I mean? That the, the degree of um, that stage and development, I think they've been stopped at, uh, uh, frozen into. And uh, to bring that to the attention, that um you know that that is understandable that they put that blame on themselves or uh incriminate themselves at that age but at the age they're at now it's not very becoming you know what i mean and, and does it make any sense and i find um approaching it that way uh since i've um studied uh what was um you know um clarity on stages uh, that that's helped a lot of the people I've worked with uh, uh, really, really, really sharpens uh, the understanding of what they're doing to themselves. And that's a form of negative magical uh, thinking. What you were saying there, Ron, about um, helping them understand what they're doing to themselves or even a way for us to incorporate our own shadow. Uh, developing that objective observer to some degree where we can see how life is affecting us and the effect of our own actions and the effects of others feels like an important way to work with shadow there. Bye. 
I do think this is the difference between green and real purple, that a green people at least could have the possibility to see this pers perspective from outside. While when you are in purple, purple, you just, I, I talk sometimes with these people, they, they just can't see other perspectives, you know? And I think the task, I think personally that green is a good step to reawake these um, sensibilities which we had when we were in purple, but they are still not getting it, let's say, right, you know, because they are, I don't know. <laughs> uh, when you, that I think would be our task as uh, going into integral to really um, include these abilities, which are called paranormal abilities, but which are not paranormal, which are completely normal, but um, integrate them in our way of, of, of being again without taking all this original purple negative shadow stuff uh, mm. into our lives. So I want to draw us back in the direction of some of the gifts that purple holds and integrating that into a more embracing and more encompassing um, perspective. And, you know, as I see some of the gifts related to this reverence is that there's a non-interference. There is an allowing what wants to emerge to emerge. Now, of course, this is in a non-differentiated pre-rational way. However, this listening first rather than speaking and is, has a, a, lot of, a lot of really, really strong benefits. Now, teaching in a sustainable living program Sustainability is very much rooted in a very strong, mean, green, you know, it's, it's us against the world orientation. And I've come to see, you know, in, in relating some of this purple and green in the context of sustainability, that one difference is that green is a lot about connection and connecting different elements, whereas purple is about relatedness. And so it's this non-differentiated oneness and this non-differentiated oneness that is rooted in place rather than natural environments is something that offers tremendous gifts in an integral embrace there's a there's a quality of that i'm not sure if i'm building on the back of what you just said Devin, but i was thinking about the way that purple really comes out uh sometimes at the best in integral and for me personally, there's this like real, um, almost like shared subtle space of energy of like co-creation that kind of speaks to this kind of um, letting it go and and like bring it in. Like whenever I, I experience this so often talking to people with integral, I do kind of get this sense of this kind of really active um, energetic bubble that seems bigger than the two or more people um inside of it so i suppose uh just hearing you kind of really just made me think of how purple can really come online at, um at integral and also a little bit that in some ways the uh the letting go and not questioning i also think is a little bit of a of a problem like i think um i was speaking to a few people about the, the salt body stuff and in some ways the salt body needs to be like taken away from new age land like it needs a bit of like trans the, the old kind of transrational versus like pre-rational um and being made into like a i don't know a grounded practice that's kind of has all of the good without so much of the kind of um just naive acceptance of everything that goes on in the in the kind of subtle realm Well, I, th I think the, um, the, the, Paul, the negative aspect of what you were alluding to is kind of like what they call fatalism. It's like some traditional cultures, it's like, you know, if something bad happens, like, like some of the people I was mentioning in Hawaii, because of the, some of that, the, the shadow part of that acceptance is like, well, we're just not going to do anything because it's all the will, the spirits, and I don't really have any say in that until red comes on where my ego and will is able to fight back against the forces of nature. And I think that's, um, and I also like what you were saying, Paul, about 
rescuing the subtle stuff from new age um, explication of, of those kind of concepts. And I was thinking about if anyone here knows about literature, you know, like, and Karen Voorhees, you're talking about some of like the, the horror novels and that kind of thing of like um, Stephen King, or, or I, was, I was thinking about like dark romanticism or like certain kinds of romantic literature and, and poetry and um, how it was very much in contrast with like American transcendentalism, where I think some of the dark romantic literature in like the 1800s was about trying to show the horrors and terrors of nature and the natural world that was captured in, in the poetry and the literature and philosophy and art. And then, and then American transcendentalism to me is like, you know, like Walt uh, Whitman and Emerson and Thoreau. It's kind of like green combined with like causal state insights. And I think it's, it's very important to recognize that um, potential pre-trans fallacy that could happen there, you know? And I think that that's, that's, and Paul, I'd like to hear you say more about rescuing it from new age land. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, and I think that maybe in, in integral, you know, this, this understanding um, the pre-trans fallacy is be it's a helpful start to not, is not to conflate the green uh, with the purple and then regress down, way down the spiral. Yes, we don't want to just regress because those subtle realms, they are real. Anybody who's experienced them knows they are real. And if we don't have the tools of cognition of the higher stages and the will, which is really the red, if we don't have those tools, the subtle stages are terrifying and, and annihilating. Just like Ryan was just riffing on Dracula, you know, those kind of the horror side, the gothic novels, dark fantasy. We, when we have the tools to deal with them, and we, and also the shadow, our shadow tools for working on our own personal shadows, which is where these things tend to erupt from. These dark things, they, they, they get at us through our own personal shadows. These are real forces. The subtle spaces are real. These we spaces were in that bubble that Paul was talking about, and there are people who are working with these we spaces that, and, and as Heidi said, it's not paranormal. It's normal that we have not yet codified in a rational way, but we, as we go up into our, our stages, we have the tools where we can access the toolkit at every level as we need it. I cognize this as like a radio. We're going from AM radios to FM radios. Those of us in our age bracket remember AM radios. You could get a few radio stations with really tinny music, and then FM radios came out, and suddenly you can get 10 times as many radio stations in a much broader range of sound. Well, we had to tune out the lower, really the lower three levels in order to develop from what blue and then um, green, uh, um, I I'm, I'm keep getting mixing spiral dynamics up with Ken Wilbers, but from the fourth chakra and, you know, the, the dogmatic religions, then rational science and then green, the, the post rational in order to really develop the ability to focus in on those bandwidths, so to speak, we had to withdraw our attention from the lower three and we kind of lost conscious contact with them. And we tended to repress them in order to move higher, but I'm so excited about integral and second tier because I see us now, we have the capacity now, if we work at it a bit, to access any of those bandwidths. I mean, we can listen to one station and they say, wait a minute, um, there's something on that other station that's more appropriate right now. We can, we can <clears throat> access each of these levels as we need to. And here's where I want to kind of double down on the let's not just regress to purple that's not the answer we want to come back at purple on a higher octave where we have the tools to consciously and positively deal with all of the energies the dark as well as the light and use them in constructive ways because it's all just energy really we we, we have this incredible toolkit now um, i'm just thrilled about all of this and i'm thrilled about this discussion that um, moment of where the green goes back into the pre-trans purple feels particularly interesting to me, especially as uh, for a while I was involved in a lot of spiritual groups where with the openings people would lose their grounding completely. And um, the what you were saying, Karen, about will feels very important and the element of choice. Um, 
continuing to, to preserve those abilities feels like a safeguard from falling into the pre-trans fallacy. And um, that's also something that I see uh, as we were talking about with integral stages is there's this desire to be of service in the world to do something that helps um, us work with the emergent openness that can be there, um, but still be a individual effective person uh, with a healthy ego in the world. There's, uh, there's something about the, the subtle body, like being really grounded in the body that to me just smacks of taking it out of Greenland and kind of like the new age. I, like, I wonder if it's something, because one of the things I find particularly grounding is like having orange combined with uh, these subtle states, like the amount of actual scientific research starting to go on. I was, I was watching an interview with um, Rupert Sheldrake and to listen to someone who was scientific and... Um, well, wow, it's done a lot of psychedelics, so it's like had had plenty of experience. There's something about that, and I was um, I don't know if Damiano can hear this, but I was talking to Damiano about it, of like having these almost like a, a fascination of like what's possible with the subtle body in relation to um, the physical body. Like I've seen people like I was watching a video of this guy, and he was I don't know, it was, it was quite a small guy, and he was like deadlifting 400 kilograms stuff and, and watching like some of these martial artists do this insane like kind of matrix uh stuff and we live in an interesting time where people like measure brain waves and they're starting to measure um these kind of self states and like personally i think there's a i think that's one of the biggest ways that it can be taken made it made uh, more rational is actually combining it with um with orange and i think part of that as well like part of orange emphasis is like being able to do stuff in in the outer world because i feel like um uh and i appreciate ryan saying fatalism because i think that really nails part of it and also like the lack of free will that comes with it is there's so much like kind of people meditating on a cloud going off talking to the like these kind of imaginary or or possibly not i'm trying to think of this like famous society or whatever um with a, I don't know if anybody can help me out. Um, where it's like, it's just so removed from the world and like actually doing any any action that it kind of just starts to get like navel gazy and, and borderline a little bit like um, uh, kind of psychosis because it's very easy to get lost in these like really strong states and and take them literally and all this sort of stuff. Would this be the same as spiritual bypassing? Um, listening to you guys um, um, regressing down into purple and sort of staying there, and as uh, my description earlier, walking around in the neighborhood and, and you know, in, in a sense, spiritual bypassing, but also grounding myself into the earth. Um, but I'd love some response to that. Personally, I think uh, absolutely. I was talking to someone this week, and I was talking about my. It was partly on the back of beige, our, our talk. I was sitting with like suicidal feelings, which were, well, frankly, were intense and all this kind of stuff. And I was talking to someone who's very green, and she was kind of going this airy fire, like you know, suicide is painless. You know, I've had this experience, and it was just like there was such a strong red part of me that's just like, uh, were to kind of strangle her. Um, but that's not that abnormal in Greenland um, and the kind of spiritual. I mean, I, I don't think there's like a, that's a really strong example of spiritual bypassing, to be fair. But yeah, the, that stuff seems to happen quite a lot. Well, I had this week with a Zen teacher. I said, he said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And he said, oh, that doesn't exist. You need to set your mind, and that to me was complete spiritual bypass. You know, he asked me how I felt, so I told him how I felt, and he was like, "Go to the one mind or something." And I was like, I'm like "Oh wow, come on!" A therapist friend of mine calls that spiritual malpractice. Um, I want to emphasize again the importance of developing objective observer and like the, the nuance of that that happens at this stage. Um, I saw someone, um, I can't remember her name, but she, she described 
the ability to become self-reflexive as like, um, I'm going to use this paper as don't worry about what's on the paper as a um, way to understand that when we're an animal, our consciousness, which is a flat thing, can start to bend and be able to see more of the world. And um, at this uh, purple and red stage, our consciousness can bend enough that we can start to see ourself for the first time and notice what's going on. Um, it, we can actually start to navel gaze and that's, that's like a big celebration. And as the later stages develop, that self-reflexiveness can then look at our very center, but um, that's not happening there at, at purple yet. And so um, objective observer is less of like a looking at things from the outside, but for the first time being able to look at things from the inside and that's, um, an important thing um, to in relationship to spiritual bypassing, because with spiritual bypassing, it's like, what is happening? No, that's not happening. It's not real. I'm going to just be here in present moment where we're dismissing our first person perspective. Um, and so that question, like, how do you feel? What are the emotions that are... Um, that are happening, what are my body sensations, can be a way of um, developing healthy purple and working with our own shadow um, at any stage in relationship to purple. Natalie, I think you need to write a book. Very wise. Also just pulling things from other people. <laughs> I was thinking with your uh, bent paper and then that the first time you can see yourself from inside, I think that is also then the possibility from there go into red and into recognize I am somebody because before you are nobody. You are part of, you know, uh, of this big uh, community, but you are not existent as you. But then when you begin to be able to see yourself, ah, yeah, that's me. You can start to say, hey, you're not the boss of me, and I don't mm -hmm. need to be in this. There's no, there's no boogeyman out there. I can go out. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm some, some entity separate from, from all the others, because before I could only see you, but now I can see me too. And I see, oh, I'm, I'm somebody, <laughs> you know. And that's the value of relationship here at Purple. Rather than connection, relationship, just like a, a child, that reflection of um, someone's emotional experience back to them can help develop that self-boundary. And that's something that we can do to, to support others. You know, oh, are you, are you feeling sad? How did this affect you? Yes, that's one of the essentials of purple as purple in that has not yet become conscious at any of the higher levels is we really do not yet have a self sense, a separate self sense at the level of purple. It's fused. It's not yet differentiated. And this is one of the, and this is one of the beginnings of the red. When I say, instead of you, you notice small children, when they start talking, they first refer to themselves as me, not I. And I, as far as I know, that happens in every language. And, you know, this, I'd need to research this. But that sense of self is still kind of like an emulsion. It's not yet separated out from the sense of the people around me. And it's one of the great achievements of RED is to have a sense that not only am I sentient, but I have a will and intention, and I can act on that, and I can act in the world. And that's when the locusts start saying, me do, me do, or no, you know, those power words. And so the regression to purple does not serve us well, but we, in order to reach those higher stages, a lot of us have really repressed it. And I think that leaves us open to this regret, this, the, the unhealthy regression from green that we're seeing. And ironically being more grounded in our bodies, I think for a lot of us, certainly me at our levels, really being getting my attention back in my body to really what is my body telling me about my physical and emotional state that's part of reclaiming these levels in in a healthy way and integrating them with the higher levels 
But it's really the, at, the, at those early levels, we don't yet really know that we exist as a subject, as an I, and that's one of the great achievements at the higher levels. Uh, I, I was thinking about like taking purple up into to, into other stages because uh, Natalie and Karen, you both kind of like mentioned red, and one of the things that occurs to me is how different purple can start to act when it gets into other stages. Like um, I'm thinking of uh, Ryan, like when he was coming to me, and he's like, "Oh, I'd love to do this Dota team." Um, this kind of computer game thing and it's kind of it made me think of like like a like a band of brothers in war or like red has a lot of purple going in it like the military or uh, fighting it's like everybody's there is uh is part of a unit um beige you kind of see this like i, I guess i guess it's a beige part of purple um where like uh kind of babies are kind of held like constantly and like kind of passed around through the entire community so there's kind of like a this physical connection that goes through it and then i was thinking of like um uh orange like the the kind of camaraderie that can come in at working where everybody's like teaming up together and it's kind of awesome because everybody like when it when it's kind of like going really well there's this really strong um sense of teamwork so it's kind of like Purple can really express itself very differently at the different, um, uh, like all the different stages. Just drawing on a background in a whole bunch of different indigenous communities, uh, the transition from, I think a point that Karen brought forth here is that there is a non-self in purple and this non-self is often celebrated. And what I've observed is that sports is often a really good transition in creating this separate self within a competitive environment and also transitioning into red then. And, you know, that's across native communities all over the place. Yes. And with Devin and what you, what you folks have been saying, I'm now imagining what purple can contribute as we go on up into second tier. And as we have, having developed an ego, and now we begin to transcend it, and it's not that we leave it or destroy it, but the ego becomes transparent, it's still there, it's still a structure that's necessary, but we see through it, it's become, and, and we, see, we see again the connectedness, that beautiful connectedness, that that's life, I mean, we're lifeless without that. And so the purple comes back in at that higher octave in such a beautiful way. We're, we're transcending our egos at the same time. We're very solidly established with them, but they no longer limitless. And losing that sense of self at these levels of transcendence, as opposed to a regression to like a, a one and a half year old, say. And so I'm, I'm kind of having fun now, just kind of in my mind, spitting out what that beautiful purple can be at these higher levels. Like, like Devin was just saying. <clears throat> yeah, I'm almost hearing, hearing it is coming from the highest self. Um, when I experienced the uh, purple, um, as a, like a transcend, transcended uh, experience with one and all, it's, it's kind of like, in his uh, book, um, the uh, the next religion uh, about the pancake, you know, over the head, uh, that you become the pancake. It, it, it seems to me that when I uh, experience that, it, it's, it's it's really going through the um, the um, altered states to a higher state of um, uh, I am this, you know, the um, but I mean. Other hand, like you say, without with the collapse of the ego, um, is is that oneness, uh, and that itself brings back for me anyway the um, the magical quality of the oneness of all life and all that exists. There's just just a supreme sense of awe that one can experience. And uh, in this connection, I think about the, the film the Avatar, which I saw in 3D, and the beauty of this uh, 
of these magical words. I think they can be very inspirational and that's definitely something we need to rediscover and regain into our lives, which with orange has become so dull. <laughs> so. <laughs> I have a I have a thing on that. I was just looking at my list, and um, it's funny you mentioned Avatar because it's such a stunning, sensual film. And I think so many tribes have that, like just these incredible uh, things they wear. Um, and it made me think of um, rituals, like how how important that is. Like part of that is a bit of, as people mentioned, kind of just like maybe a little bit of arbitrary superstition, but a lot of it is also like incredibly strong. Uh, symbolism. Um, people mentioned young, and it's kind of the the subtle body that that comes along with that. Um, there's been kind of like debate around like blue and integral and stuff like this. And I think like one of the things I personally miss, um, or maybe maybe there's stuff out there, is like having rituals in the integral community that kind of like brings people together. I mean, in a way, this very cool is a is a ritual. Um, it's kind of like, it seems quite sweetly symbolic that it's on Sunday, kind of like the, the Christian thing. Um, but I think, I mean, there'd, there'd be a lot of power in that, but also I, I guess like a lot of um, sort of makes me think of like embodied unity, but in a way that would be like really kind of distinct and intelligent more than probably what would typically come out of uh, purple and all this kind of stuff. Awesome, Paul, let's start to keep on the lookout for some that we can develop. That's what my, in my novel, 11,000 years ago, that's my hero and the first high priestess, that was her job, was to come up with ritual songs and dances that would pull the community together because people are still largely living in the impulse of the moment and these are the first agricultural communities and you've, you've got to have a little more um, structure than that. So that was the job. So. Um, let's just start looking for ideas that come up as we continue these wonderful talks and see if we can be the seed for a few. Those rituals also feel like a good um, activity like sports to gain that self-reflexive ability to notice what one is doing and how that affects <coughs> things. And um, my mind's gone in a little bit of another direction, which is how um, sticky we can be when we're in this stage. Anything that's said about us or about our environment is really absorbed and interpreted as true. And so when, as if we're at integral stages when, and working with people at magical stages, um, being really careful about what we say and how we say it is really, really important. Even though their present moment, it has very lasting effects. I remember uh, there is an echo. Somebody is not muted, I think. Um, I remember a um, woman in the stage, and she really believed that uh, she has been seen with a bad eye, and somebody has cast, uh, uh, put a bad fortune on her, and things like that. I mean, we still, we can also believe that, but if we believe that, we believe it in a different way, I think, from, a, from a, the good and the bad, you know, the, the good providence, finding a parking space or things like that, you know. Uh, it's, um, it's a different quality only in, when you are in, in higher stages. But still, I think we need that to keep our life uh, somehow juicy whatever ritual it is or whatever um, imagination we have, which is not, let's say, orange realistic, but to allow us to, to, to go away from this, that everything must be literally true, you know, and explore the, the power of the imagination or the, yeah, of a ritual, which is more or less the same thing in my eyes. And, and again, it draws back to, to place and the import of, of place in this developmental stage. And that's something that is critically negligent in many, many later, later stages, and, and inc including and perhaps especially in, in orange and green, where, where in 
environment is just viewed as object is out there. And this place, if we look at what indigeneity and ind indigenous is all about, it's about place and about this reverence that comes from place. That's not to, you know, say that what we've discussed and all of these, these grits are not present, but to really root ourselves in place and to grow from those dimensions. That's a, um, I think one of the things I really miss in, in purple when you say place of the ritual thing, like, um, like in blue, you know, they, you go to church and there's this incredible building or, um, I'm thinking of like native Indian, like sweat lodges, the fact that there is a kind of spiritual womb physically in some way that the community comes together to, to be, I think there's like so much of that that's been, that kind of gets lost in the, in the higher level. Um, in, in some ways, I kind of appreciate Damiano's, which I guess some point they've gotten to, but like, um, and, and zoom a little bit, there's a kind of like a digital space that we kind of, we, we come to. I almost wonder if there's like a way that that could be, could be strengthened or like, uh, even if not even in the kind of like the local, when, if people can actually get together locally, like to have a really strong physical space where people can actually come together. Uh, just, just think would would be really great as well. I think. Kate, were you going to say something a, a little while ago? Oh, I was just going to echo what Natalie was saying about um, being really careful and thinking again about what Don Beck was saying about Dick Cheney. You know that he actually has um, bringing the lines of development. He felt that he had really higher levels of cognitive development than I mean, he was a. He was a, what he called yellow, then yellow thinker. And then he, he was very developed in that way. And because of that, he could manipulate people's fears from the purple meme. And I've seen that recently in a spiritual group I'm in where this, uh, this leader, she's a leader, so she's in a power position with PhD and well-known scholar and all that sort of thing came, comes in and says some kind of threatening things, you know, like if you don't, stick with this one particular dogma. She says the Dakinis are going to come in and take it all away. So you will never have, and I'm, and I was like, what? Where? <laughs> and I, I, it's what's we, I don't think she's being manipulative like Dick Cheney because I know her. I think she actually kind of believes that. And then I thought, well, how could she have like a PhD and be, you know, it's like, a, it's being careful like when about the ways that maybe we haven't integrated that shadow and then we just fall into it with manipulating other people in their own fears. It's, it's kind of scary when you get more capacity. So, so Kate, what I'm hearing you say is I, I feel like you're alluding to different lines of development and let someone like Dick Cheney's cognitive line of intelligence could spike into a higher place, but other areas where moral development or, you know, ego development were not there and, and how that gap can be very dangerous and you become so manipulative and, and um, you know, or, or, or someone can have a PhD and have a high level of cognitive development, but they have genuine purple beliefs because some other line is, is fixated at that level. So that's yeah, uh, interesting. But uh, also I, what I'm hearing from this conversation is it's kind of developing into ways to build community and to create a sense of place, connection. Um, I, I love Paul, what you said about ritual. And I started thinking a little bit about how maybe purple instincts, you know, how they're so far from our consciousness and from our society at orange and green and how some of these purple impulses come back in our, in our lives in, in ways that are kind of like covert. Like for example, whenever I go to the gym, I always go to the sauna and I spend like half an hour meditating in the sauna. And I think that's like some primordial purple instinct of like wanting to go to the sweat lodge. <laughs> And like, and that's kind of like my, on some deep subconscious archetypal level, it's almost like some like uh, purification ritual practice, you know, you know, there's all these like, you know, big naked old white guys in the uh, sauna and, and talking about politics and religion and all kind of politically incorrect topics. And uh, it, it's just a fun like little community um, setting, you know, and, I, and it's interesting how I, I became part of my routine. And it'd be fun to brainstorm, you know, what other kind of activities or groups or, or, or rituals we can have to bring that 
purple sense of group approach to the community that we developed. I was going to say something, like that, but then I sort of call myself, and I'm like, well, that's not really that profound. But it's part of me that's just like, I look at the Integral Life Forum, and I'm looking at Damiano, uh, Damiano's platform, and it's just like, man, I wish it was like more colorful, like more creative, more artistic, more kind of like, I and mean, I love all the kind of, especially kind of spiritual and political intellectualism, but like to have more sensuality and more like a, a kind of like, uh, group bond, I think it's something I really like. And also, um, Kate and, and uh, Ryan kind of alluding to, like, um, I'm thinking of, like, how much this group has helped me personally and how much I get burned, like, wanting to be in a tribe, but then kind of, like, having this um, uh, unskilled navigation of my kind of integral gravity with uh, other stages, like, struggling with green, possibly... Uh, because I'm not navigating, but also there are just parts of it that are like pathological. And there are like loads of groups like that, that um, I can enjoy if I'm kind of sitting in the include part of my gravity. But it's like, it's so easy for me to just start like um, getting inspired about my integralness or something and then trying to get it, trying to hash it out with people or something and then just getting burned and finding the, the group kind of... Uh, um, I guess kind of, yeah, just coming at me and like actually having uh, me personally, like being integral can actually like at times make it a little like th there's that kind of shadow difficulty of being with the lower levels, wanting to um, kind of get along and at other times not and sort of navigating this like what's good about each level and what's pathological and like finding that um, finding that territory like difficult to navigate. But I find it way easier actually being in an integral group to actually do that. So you have led me, Paul, into the, the topic Damiano and his platform. I tried it a little out and I think there is a possibility to do some colors, which in the integral life platform doesn't seem to be so, so easy. And I really would invite you, I don't know how many people are already there, to to go there and I don't know exactly Damiano if you want to uh, make it bigger for all integral people I anyway I have created one thread there for the zoom group to uh, have a possibility I will post the, the video afterwards there too and it will also be in my website and um, that we keep the conversations there. If somebody will uh, has an idea afterwards, you know, that they don't send emails around to all of us, but put it in this platform so everybody can can see it and, and can respond to it. It's a little bit like Integral Life platform, but I find it nicer, <laughs> better organized or something like that. I haven't completely understood it yet, but Damiano has uh, given me the in first in instructions and you can see that and uh, come up whenever questions are and we could I think we could collaborate to make it exactly as this place which we were talking uh, about for for us and uh, uh, customize it as, as we want to and um, yeah I invite you to go there I think I sent it around in the last in the last email otherwise I, I sent it to you again the link and come in and we see what we can do there. And maybe <laughs> at the end, all integral people will be there because what is really, really, really cool in this platform, you say what your professions is with, with tax and so, and you say what your, um, in your profile, what your skills are logically and what your des desires are, what your, what, what your hobbies and whatever it is. And so everybody can see that. Uh, and when you give in this attack, you find the people who are uh, having uh, written the same thing. And so you can find the people to connect personally. I mean, we are a small group. We don't need it yet, but it has the potential to, to connect a uh, huge amount of people and to find collaborators or co-creators in conversations, uh, which otherwise we don't know. 
No, we know Karen, you are a writer and uh, things like that, you know. But who knows it from the rest of the integral community? Nobody. No? Just one thing: Is anybody talking to Corey about this? Because it's just I feel like it would be just kind of polite to include him. I think I think Damiano has posted something in a in one of the forum posts that Corey picked I think up so. on. Yeah, I know he does um, work into that, and I know it's not great, but he does do that. Uh, he said, I tried to reach out twice, but he didn't get back at me. So, Interest Interestingly I, I enough, I am in the middle of a conversation, ongoing conversation with Corey DeVos for the last week, specifically about a thread on the Integral Life Forum about how difficult it is to use the Integral Life Forum. So um, I think we, I want to be very careful and, tac and tactful here because he's put vast amounts of time creating this so that they didn't have to use Facebook, basically. Um, but this is, um, I think, some tactful way to bring him in. He actually said that he knew about this Zoom chat group and he might join us once. So maybe the suggestion is that, hey, we're talking about something that's relevant here. Do you want to, uh, you might consider joining us. I will look for tactful ways to splice Corey into this conversation we're having. Yeah, and uh, Damiano says, I wanted to reach out exactly so it would not be perceived as competition to the forum. No, I don't think it is a competition to the forum. It is, first of all, for us as a group to be together and not publicly, immediately with, with everybody in the forum. And a, a member directory, you write. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I think, as far as I've understood, Damiano, you wanted to offer uh, that platform, not maybe ours, what we are created. There are many possibilities to create extra groups, you know, as a member directory for the whole integral community. That wouldn't be the same thing as, as we have created, isn't it so, Damiano? Would be a different thing. Anyway, next time when you are here, then we, we should uh, talk about that again. And yeah, it would be beautiful if everyone could put their information in, in this place and find it. This is definitely not in the integral life and they can integrate that, you know, this part of your platform. So really good. I think um, having looked at it and having spoken a fair bit to Damiano, I think like one of the strengths that this, this project really has is like actually bringing people together to actually like do stuff. Um, like I see a lot, like integral life forum at the moment tends to be like for kind of debate sharing ideas but less for um actually coming together and in the aim of like actually doing something i also think i think it's an interesting debate like um it's kind of timely that one of the guys on the forum posted about um ungreening the integral life forums as kind of having hierarchy and to me um give credit where uh cory where it's due with cory but i think like they they could really do the debate around like lower right systems which i think damiano would be uh really bloody good at because he's got the just really great thinking of, of the lower right but like um using lower right in a way that will really enable lots that we want um at integral like there's a kind of this platform has a different flavor than the integral forum but i mean there has to be loads of really tech like smart people in the integral world that can make like um make a better version of the internet that we've seen. Like, I remember Corey at the start, I believe, talking about the forum, that he kind of wanted to move away from some of the stuff of like Facebook because there were problems like that. It's like um, kind of a bit of a breeding ground for narcissism or Twitter because of the way that it works it tends to, which I guess is, is um, fitting because we're talking about purple, but lends itself to just ridiculous amounts of tribalism. Um, I think part of that, is at fault with the way that the actual system of the website works. So I think, uh, like, uh, um, kind of having spoken to Damian, like having that heart in the place of like making a really good system that really enables like the best of um, what we want. And is also probably like uh, pushing the edge really is a kind of novel and um, possibly could like really, really help the internet, I think beyond even like our own individual into a platform. Yeah, thank you, Damiano. We will figure out how, how to do that for us first. And <clears throat> then what will come out of that, it's, uh, we will see.
And I posted the, the talk I will stream um, on Wednesday. I created a, a voice marketplace so where everybody can write what they are offering or what the, which is not directly con connected with a, uh, our Zoom call or with uh, uh, other topics which Demiano has created uh, already. Uh, I posted the conversation we have done with Karen and I will live stream it on Wednesday. And so you can see that there. And I think also if anybody is a coach or is doing things which can be done over internet, that we have also a place there where you can post it and whoever is interested uh, can do that. I mean, we are still in a, in a, in a number where we can talk one-on-one -on -one. no it's not yet so important but i think we need to begin to do these things and then they mm -hmm. will they will grow by themselves so so yeah, let's uh, do a check large. out excuse me this group can get really large i'm in a group with diane hamilton it has like 95 people in it oh, every wow. week. and but she's figured out all kinds of ways they're getting people in dyads and triads and this different practice no, so there's all kinds of possibilities yeah that we can still figure out also no also these calls when we have done let's say the the basics like the levels and uh, the quadrants and things like that and then come different topics we can uh, go in different rooms and things that it will be a journey and i'm looking forward to that uh, i thought we are almost at the one and a half hour mark and so let's do a sort of a summary of everybody who what what they got out of the um, session today out of purple and uh, what was maybe missing or what we could still do and things like that and i will send you the link for both uh, where i post a video on my website and then also the kate if you can send me the um, the, <coughs> the timestamps then when you have done them i will publish them too and I will send the link to this uh, platform from Damiano, who is not yet there. Please go and figure that out. It's, I think it's quite intuitive. Also, I still have some questions, Damiano. <laughs> so. um, I'm also wondering if we want to end with a little bit of body practice. We'll last maybe two minutes after we all check out. Excuse me, we, I forgot it at the beginning, but I think you, you were not there right away at the beginning because yeah. that would be a good ritual to do at the beginning and the end uh, a short body practice. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> So for me, this session took Purple out of the realm of um, history and anthropology and stuff in the past. It's still kind of down there at our foundations, but not so much present. I just saw it pervade everything. It's magic. It's life. It's beautiful. And it will increasingly um, enrich the beauty of the levels as we continue to go up. For, for me, it seemed to um, help integrate the, um, just more conscious of that the uh, manifestation of purple um, uh, can manifest through all the different stages, you know what I mean? And it was kind of like a <clears throat> identifying with my own experiences, uh, what it was like. And I don't know, something just expanded more um, by hearing everyone share and talk um, the um, magnificence of uh, purple and how in a way this, it's a force that transcends the different levels that we go through. Um, and probably we still have a lot more discovery that we're gonna have a chance to uh, experience as we move on ourselves in, in expanding. So I, I know some something just something shifted, and again, I, it's from this sharing and and um, listening to all of you that um, I really, really, really felt it. Maybe I still haven't got it language yet, in my own mind, but something shifted in a very good way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, I just want to say this was a. Uh, um really wonderful to hear everyone's insights and perspectives on purple. I, I wanted to just um, 
responded to something Damiano typed about how he reached out to Corey twice, but he didn't get back to him. And I kind of wanted to echo some of that because I've also reached out to him about different things and never heard back from him. And um, I was, and, you know, Paul and I were kind of joking about this when we were talking last week, but we're, I, I, I'm wondering what we can do as, since we're all like unionized in a way here with this call and we know each other personally, like what we can do to support each other, you know, um, gang mob style. <laughs> uh, if we, if there's something we feel important or if we wanted to, like Paul and I were even floating the idea of having like a guest on the show or on the, on the call uh, sometime and, and being like, okay, everyone. So on the next call, Corey DeVos is going to join us and we're going to talk about this. And then I bet 50 more people are going to come. So it's like, what can we do to support each other? And if, if Damiano or someone has something important to get to the integral leadership, what can we do as a team on, on like, I, I was, I was, I was telling Paul, like if not only with these kind of things, but if you want to broach an issue that's controversial or ballsy or, or edgy, I will back you hundred percent. I will like the post. I will bump the post. I will comment on the post. So like what we can do to like strategically help each other and like to help uh, like support Damiano or, or whatever in contacting Corey. I'm just wondering what we can do as a team. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess I'll build on that because I I just went jazzed, jazzed up and yeah, we have had some pretty great conversations. Like I really jumped on the the support thing. Like I feel such a strong drive to like, everybody on this call. Um, kind of getting the sense that everybody has their different um, abilities or different interests, and it's kind of like I feel personally a big part of me would like, man, I'd love to work on like anything with anybody almost. But like people are really interested in stuff that that um feels really important like every time Karen I hear about your book I'm just like I feel like I'm teased like man I really want to read this kind of stuff or even just like collaborate or just talk about um art so I really appreciate the just the word support like um I know I'd really love to support anybody's endeavors and I just think it'd be awesome if we could um like Ryan was saying a little bit in there like we were actually talking about like why aren't more people coming onto the cause like you think everybody's into cool. they want to talk to each other um there's almost like something sluggish or something going on like to really ramp up the purple for everybody to be like really supportive i feel like it's so ripe that uh it's almost like it just needs waking up or something so um so so i really appreciate i really appreciate this call um it just felt really vital and really different and also just this theme of like last time beige was something that I hadn't necessarily thought about. And th this time again with Purple, it's just like, wow, Purple's massive. Um, so yeah, just just uh, just really inspired. I guess I kind of want to underline like just the fact that we're in an integral tribe like right now. Like I, I don't think that can be said enough. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yep. Yeah, and uh, to what you're saying, uh, Damiano has written that is one thing the platform can, can help with if you want to share projects in which we want to support from each other. And it's exactly, it seems to be very, very well thought out, Damiano. <laughs> and Ryan, you write Amen. <laughs> That's good. Amen. Amen. Good. So, yeah, I, I can, can do my checkout. Uh, I find it, yeah, uh, Purple is surprisingly more present in, in, in our lives than we think, in my opinion. And what I really would like more still to discuss is how to deal with purple people. And I really appreciate Ryan to be here and also, where is he gone? Uh, uh, Kevin, not Kevin, uh, Devin. Devin. Uh, uh, when you have first ex experience from really a, a culture of, of, of purple people, that's what we don't have. No? But our societies were sort of in blue, orange, slightly green, and now all with the immigrants come all the people uh, like red, purple, and even beige into our country. So at, at, uh, suddenly... All, all the all the memes are present, and we don't really know how to handle the people, you know. And that would be still a topic: how to how to develop ways of communication uh, with those people and inspire them to communicate with us. So that would be still something I would like to do. And remember, go to the when I have posted the video and underneath write everything which comes up 
in your mind. I saw Ronald, uh, you were uh, saying that this has opened something up. Write it then there as an, also for you as a notebook, let's say, you know, and have uh, us participate on, on, on your insights. Thank you for being there with the group. It's beautiful. I have to say these calls are just so helpful for me. I've been trying to start an integral group here in this place that I would term as the greenest place in America, Pioneer Valley, Massachusetts. And I'm saying that after living in Boulder, Colorado for 15 years. And it's I, every time I start the group, people just come and then they're like, huh? And they can't, they, they're, they're, and then they have a really bad reaction to, you know, Ken or whatever. And so it's really great to be able to talk to people that are just not, trying to deconstruct integral the whole <laughs> hour <laughs> and um also it's just for me i you know i work in prisons i work with prisoners and run an organization that works with prisoners all over the country and all over the world and works we work now we're working with police officers and correction officers and pro officers and on and on and on public safety and firemen and everybody under the sun and so it's it's all the memes and so it gets really dicey and we're training people how to go in and work with people and people in the green just don't know how to, you know, talk to people in different means and not saying I do either, but um, it's, it, it's, a, it's great to have this to really be going through these memes and just seeing how rich it is and how much there is to unpack and work with. Thank you all. <clears throat> Um, I also agree. I would love to see another round of going through to the colors in uh, focusing on communication skills and maybe a little bit of shadow work um, that comes up with the challenges of communication, but really that communication focus. So I, I, um, I'm trying to get out the door, as you guys know, um, at the end of the call, it's sort of, the, this time is sort of a cramp for me to get to my next, uh, to church. I really appreciated this discussion and I like Natalie's idea of doing this again around communications and, and shadow work. Um, purple is, and, and I appreciate what I learned, the best and the worst of purple, to be reminded of that because I really like my rituals. When I sit down with you guys, I have incense. This is my, I'm at a space here that I've got my tarot cards and I've got my candles and my beadwork and my crochet and my bloom. And I, I love to, in the morning, get up and have my morning rituals. And yet at the same time, um, understanding and remembering sort of the worst of this, you know, uh, the, uh, the nightmares that Karen Voorhees mentioned, you know, this is what the, the, the stuff of our worst nightmares and how I've experienced that, you know, in the middle of the night, the, the, and as um, Kate mentioned, you know, the, the, you know, the horrifying aspects of, of, of nature and uh, being alone and being fearful. So one of my issues, one of the, the difficulties I'm having with this experience is that I'm more visual than I am audio. And so I look forward to having this in some way where there's a forum or like Damiano's open dot uh, forum where I can, where I can read things and see things. So I take notes and this really helps me, uh, but I'm, I can't quite follow and grok along with my learning style as well um, as I would like to be able to but really appreciate this experience greatly. And I wish you all well for the week. <clears throat> okay, Damiano, do you are you able just to say goodbye, wave goodbye? And I think everybody else we have spoken. Maybe not. So have a good trip and everybody else a good Sunday. Ours is almost uh, almost gone. And see you next week. And Should we do a little bit of uh, oh, exercise yeah. before we go? You have to remind me until I get <laughs> aware of the ritual. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
what I was thinking of doing is uh, focusing on a sense of breathing from our heart, uh, giving and receiving, and then pulling in a sense of our dreams and grounding them here in this physical place. And so with a few breaths, um, as you exhale, extending your hands outwards and kind of stretching and opening. So this is both a stretching exercise and an energetic breathing exercise. And as you inhale, bringing the energy in the space towards your heart, towards your, your belly. And do this a few times until you start to feel a little centered. Feeling in touch with giving and receiving. And then you can imagine your, your dreams up above you and really reach up, try to grab one of them and feel its texture in your hand and pull it down towards your seat and maybe drop it on your lap, pat it on your lap or on your seat or the floor around you. And do this a few times, again, as a stretching exercise, yes, but also an energetic and emotional exercise too. Okay, and I'll leave you with a poem that a friend of mine wrote um, yesterday morning. It is, dreams are the things that niggle and gnash. Their echo, sorry, dreams are the things that niggle and gnash. They come into sight and can leave in a flash. Their echo, a heart still remembers belonging. A new world, life order for which we have longing. As I touch my palm to my chest, softly, I welcome the ache that I find there. Thank you. Hi, everybody.